Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In a previous video, I mentioned the Chevelle was having a bit of a vibration problem, which I identified it to be from the left rear of the car. At least I think so. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in the description. You can go back and take a look and see how I came to that conclusion, which is I have a bent axle. Not too good. The new axle has arrived, so we'll throw it in the car today and see if that problem is fixed. Because I don't even know if the vibration is actually from the bent axle. I just know that we have a bent axle. So we'll test that out. And one thing to note is I have my Mickey Thompson street tires on, which the vibrations do not show nearly as much with these tires as they do with the drag radials. And I think that's probably because of the larger diameter of the drag radials being 28 inches, and these are about an inch and a half shorter. Um, and as you know, the runout is going to be amplified with the taller diameter wheels. So we're going to go for a quick highway test drive to really zone in the feeling of these vibrations to get a good before and after and see if the problem is going to be fixed. Well, we're about to get onto the highway and the vibration usually happens above 90 kilometers an hour and seems to kind of go away around 110 kilometers an hour. So we'll see if I can feel it. This is our replacement axle from Mosier Engineering. You can see how it was boxed. The bearing, it's already been pressed on. This actually looks a little different. I don't remember this piece right here being there. It has the studs already on it. That uh, face of this flange looks a little different. Uh, it does come with some new stickers, which is good. So hopefully this fixes our problem. So. Let's get to work. Have the axle side by side to compare you can see the bearings are a little bit different the same part number but a little bit different you can see this old one spins nice and freely probably because it's been broken in and this one much much tighter that's all fine it dawned on me when i was removing the axle that you need this access hole to get to the retainer bolts so you can install and remove it you can see on the replacement axle that that hole is not there that is a big f up I can't install this axle and now I don't know what's going to happen with this. Obviously I have to install all this crap with the old one again and wait for the resolution of this axle. Whether that means this has to get sent back and a new one comes in or maybe I can have it drilled locally. What does that mean it's going to affect the, the strength and integrity or the temper of this axle? I don't know but man it is frustrating one eternity later so it's been a full month and i finally got my axle back you can see a hole has been drilled so i can now go ahead and install this so i'm going to go ahead and rip out the old axle once again and hopefully this fixes our vibration problem
course I need to check the run out on this axle to make sure it is straight. And this axle looks very good. It looks to be about two thou out tops, which before the radio run out was about 23 thou, so much, much better. So this is the lateral run out, which last time it was 29 thou out. And it looks like we're about three thou out now, which I would say this axle is straight, which is very encouraging. I can now go ahead and put the rest of it back together. Here's something interesting. Look at the amount of grease that has come out of the bearing. It's like that on both sides. Well, as far as I can remember, it wasn't like that before. So this tells me that a bearing failure was likely imminent. So we have it all put back together. The axle is straight. Let's go for a drive to see if the vibration is actually gone.